Hi, welcome from Sedona, or rather my hotel room in Sedona, where over the next few days I'll be taking some wonderful pictures and hopefully some video. But tonight I wanted to talk about an image I shot a few days ago in the Alabama Hills as I was leaving Bishop. Uh, I left early enough to catch the moon setting over the Eastern Sierras, uh, the snow-capped Eastern Sierras, from the northern end of the Alabama Hills. And I'll show this image now. I love this image. Um, I'm, I'm happy uh, that it turned out the way it turned out. Um, and um, I will show you in this video how I made this image. I didn't shoot any video while I was making this image because I was set up in a campsite and there was somebody in a tent about 20 feet away from me, so I didn't want to disturb them. Uh, I was very quiet in, in opening my backpack and getting everything set up um, and uh, wasn't going to mess with video and talking to myself in the middle of the night. Um, so I'll make this video now to show you how I put this image together. This is, once again, a, a multi-row panorama. I shot this with the uh, GFX and the 250mm f4 lens, and if you're unfamiliar with that, that's what this beast is here. You'll notice uh, in the full image, uh, there's a moon over the eastern Sierras, but in the blue hour time that I was shooting this first image, the moon was too high over the peaks for me to get uh, as I was shooting the top row. Um, I could have gotten the moon and the, the very tip of, say, Lone Pine Mountain, but I know from experience that the software would not be able to stitch that together because there's not enough information. So what I did is I shot uh, the, the mountain peaks as the first row with enough uh, of the mountains in the image that I knew the, the stitch would be successful. And then I shot an individual image of the moon which is here, and I'll zoom in on it, and that's the moon through the 250 millimeter lens, and I use this later. I, I drop it in in its position where it would have been um, had I been able to uh, get it all in one frame, and I'll show you how I did that. But back to the top row. So I've shown in previous videos how I assemble panoramas. And so I'm gonna skip that part here. Um, I chose all of the images. I think I used the sixth image in the, in the row as the basis for the geometry. And this is the image that resulted. Um, so what I did is I then brought this into Photoshop as edit, edit in Adobe Photoshop. And this will take a little while because it's a pretty big image. There we go. So the first thing I did was I went to the image canvas size and increased the height by about six inches. And then I use the uh, select marquee select or rectangular select. Whoops, I have that in a fixed ratio. I don't want that. And selected that new portion and did a shift delete. Click and making sure that contents was content aware and everything else standard. And what I did is I let Photoshop fill in the details of the sky. This gave, gave me the headroom to drop the moon in to the position where it was when I was taking this top row. And this takes a while because it is a big image. Come on, come on, come on.
and voila, we have more sky. That allowed me to then go back into Lightroom and take that moon image and bring that into Photoshop. Edit in Adobe Photoshop. And I have an idea of where to put the moon because I shot the scene with my iPhone as a reference. Uh, and so what I do is I copy the moon. That's a command C. Command V to paste. And I'm going to put it there. I'm not what, looking at the iPhone image right now, but if we go under layers and the, um, the type of layering, if you go to screen, see how there's two, all of, all of these will cause the black background of the moon to go away. Let me zoom in. So if I do lighten, I didn't like how the edge of the moon looked here. Um, it was a little too chopped. Screen made it more natural and how the moon looked to the eye. Um, the Maria on the moon take on the sky color, which it does when it's uh, pre-dawn light uh, and you're looking at the moon uh, with the naked eye. Uh, so this to me looked very, very natural. And I was able to place the moon into the image this way and save this file as a large document format, a PSB file, because it's too big to save as a TIFF or a Photoshop file. Um, and then back into Lightroom, I did the same process with the uh, middle row of images that I shot and then the bottom row. And again, as I have done in a previous video, I brought those three individual panoramas into Photoshop, uh, saved them as, as large document formats, and then did the, um, the automate photo merge command, uh, where I brought in each of the three images. I brought the middle image in last because that's the one I wanted Photoshop to base the geometry on. And voila, it stitched it together into the final image. One last thing I want to talk about. On this top row, my exposure for each individual image uh, in this pano um, was five seconds at F8 at ISO 200. Um, so at five seconds across 14 images, it took about a minute to go from the far left image to the far right image. And in that time, the light level rose a little bit. So when I did the pano, I noticed that the right side of the image was a little brighter than the left, the sky particularly. And before I brought it into Photoshop, what I did is I, in Lightroom, I put in a, um, a graduated mask. And I'll hover and show uh, the area of the mask. And it, I brought the exposure down on the right side about a third of a stop. And that looked pretty natural to me. There is a brighter area of sky in the middle. It goes from dark to light to dark. I like that because the moon will be there and the moon brightens the part of the sky that it's in. And so to me, that was ideal. And that's how I created this image. Um, now, why would I do this? Why would I shoot three rows of 14 images each on a GFX with a 250 lens to um, to do an image that the iPhone could take in one in one picture. Um, 
And the answer there is sheer resolution. Let me go back into Photoshop and show you. You got a little taste of this before. This is at 100%. And look at these trees. You can almost count the branches on these pine trees. There's evidence of an avalanche on this piece of the mountain. The peaks are sharp. You can see the wind blowing the snow off the peaks. It's just, I, I love moving through this image in Photoshop like this and just looking at all the detail here, all the cracks in the rocks and the different types of rocks and, and again, the snow blowing off the peaks. It's just, people shoot large format film these days for the process, the way it makes them work, and the quality of the images that they can get. That's why I do these multi-row panos. I want the maximum quality uh, out of the images that I shoot, and I love the process, the thinking that goes into this. Where to start the image, where to end the image, how much to move the camera between images, making sure that everything's going to align, knowing that I need a certain amount of, of something in the frame so that the computer will be able to stitch the image, uh, planning for how to deal with the moon, how to put the moon in the image, um, the, the light difference between starting a row and ending a row. Um, it's just, I love thinking about this before I ex uh, execute on the image. Um, now, that being said, you can do this with any camera. You don't need a medium format digital camera like this. I've done these images with uh, Nikons, uh, with Canons. Um, it's really, you know, any camera that you want to use for this will work. The camera that you have will work. You don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on the camera. I would highly recommend spending as much money as you can on lenses. The very best lenses you can buy will do more for your photography than a good camera will. Um, so that's all I'll say on that right now. I did shoot two images, one pre-sunset and the other as the sun, or pre-sunrise, the other as the sun was rising. Let me show you that second image now in comparison with, um, with the, the blue hour image. And so here's the blue hour. And here's the Alpen light image. You can see the moon shifts. I actually got the moon in the frame. Um, let me show you what that looked like. The moon was low enough for me to get in the frame. Where is it? There it is. I got it in two frames. But um, it's very bright compared to the to the landscape, uh, and so I of course replaced it with the uh, better image of the moon. Um, but I put it in the right in the in the right spot. Um, and so the, these are the two wonderful image, fully detailed, um, just an amazing quality to these images that uh, I, I can't stop staring at. Um, probably I like them too much, but um, they're just so fun to walk through. And the full images are too large to bring in a Lightroom. Um, I had to save the images at about 65% size to get them into Lightroom. But even that size is enough to print 32 inches tall by 96 inches long. Um, which is pretty much the biggest size I could get on aluminum. And you can bet that these things are going to get printed on aluminum. 
So here I am walking through the image in Lightroom. Just the, the sunlight on these rocks and the trees, the shadows being cast by the rocks and the trees. Let me go show you the moon. That's what the moon looks like. Again, very natural. What I didn't expect, let me zoom out a little bit. All that snow, whoops, all that snow that was blowing um, in the previous image, when the sun came up, it lit that snow like they were clouds. You can see the slight pink in the sky. That's the snow being lit by the sun. Uh, that was really cool. Zooming in 100%. You really, if I move, you can see it. But it's just a subtle pink glow. Whoops. So... Those were the last images I shot uh, when I was in Bishop uh, or in the Eastern Sierras. Um, right after this, I, I uh, drove into Death Valley, uh, which I have to admit was uh, three frustrating days of very poor light um, and uh, absolutely no internet access. Uh, a storm had come through and apparently knocked out either wind or, or storm. Uh, had knocked out the uh, cell tower that serves Death Valley. And so uh, I stayed at uh, the ranch at Furnace Creek, uh, and they couldn't take credit cards uh, during that time because their systems were down. Uh, they could manually take the cards and call it in. Uh, flashback to the 70s there. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was... It was uh, the skies were clear. There were no clouds. Any promising sunrise or sunset, all the clouds disappeared before sunrise or sunset. Uh, I really didn't shoot much at all uh, while I was there. Didn't shoot any video. Uh, it was just very frustrating. But now I'm in Sedona and looking forward to what uh, Sedona offers. Uh, according to Photographers Ephemeris and the Skyfire plugin, uh, we've got very promising sunrises and sunsets for the next two days at least. So uh, looking forward to that. Did a little scouting today on, on where to go for sunrise. Uh, so that'll come up in a, in a future video. Um, hopefully I'll be able to shoot some on location as I'm shooting. Uh, and because um, uh, I know these talking about what I did is kind of boring. Uh, but we'll see what I can get and uh, see you next time.